Hey friends, and welcome in to A Walk Through the Word, Daily Bread with Crystal Fry. I am your host, Crystal Fry, and today's episode is part three of our four-part series on the lessons we can learn from Peter and Jesus during their encounter on the water in Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. Our focus for today is focus. Thank you for being here with me today, and I pray that you will listen with an open heart to hear the Word of God speaking to you. All right, friends, let's dive in. God's Word is powerful. The missing link is our identity in Christ. When we know who we are and who He created us to be, that is when we can truly walk in freedom. You are never alone. There is hope, and that hope is Jesus Christ. When we want to accomplish something, we have to have focus. But oftentimes, we're not focused on what's really going to push the needle forward and help us see results in our life. There is much to learn from this passage of scripture about focus. Now, raise your hand if you've ever lost focus when you were working on a goal or a project. Don't worry, my friends, I can't see you, but I know without a doubt that you are not alone. And I will be the first one to raise my hand up nice and high when this question is asked. With all the distractions of the world today, with our daily lives It's easy to lose focus. Y'all, there are some days when I walk around and I don't, don't feel like I can focus on anything. But if we're not focused on where we're going or what we're doing, we will quickly find ourselves very much like the Israelites wandering in the desert. The passage of scripture that we're studying, Matthew 14, 22 through 33, gives us some really good examples of focus from Jesus, from the disciples, and from Peter. And what happens when we keep our focus and when we lose our focus. So let's look at what Jesus is focused on in this passage. First, he's focused on the crowd and sending them all back home after a long day of teaching. Remember, this takes place after the miracle of the feeding the 5,000. So there are a lot of people to be sent on their way. Then he shifts his focus to prayer with the Father. Verse 23 tells us that Jesus went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Now, we don't know what he prayed about, but we know that he went alone and he went away from anyone or anything that could have distracted him. He was focused. He created an environment of focus. He positioned himself to have what my soul sister slash friend slash coach April Lewis calls DFT, dedicated focused time, so that he could commune with the Father. After his time of prayer, Jesus then turns his attention to the disciples out on the water, getting tossed around by the wind and the waves. He comes to them during the fourth watch of the night, and this is sometime between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. There is significance in his timing here. This miracle of walking on the water was for the disciples. Jesus didn't want a large crowd of witnesses. Remember, he'd already dismissed them on the shoreline and then went up on the mountainside to pray alone so he could make sure that there wasn't anyone around. God often uses the late night, early morning hours to reveal himself to, in the scriptures. Jacob wrestled with God. Moses led the Israelites through the Red Sea. Gideon and his army defeated the Midianites. The angel appeared to the shepherds in the field to announce the birth of the Messiah. Likewise, Jesus waits for the opportune time to reveal himself to the disciples on the water. And then Jesus turns his focus to Peter, 
who is the one disciple willing to step out on faith and come to Jesus on the water. Now let's take a look at the focus of the disciples in this passage. First, their focus is on getting to their next destination. Jesus had sent them ahead of him to the other side while he stayed back and dismissed the crowd. Next, the disciples turn their focus to the strong winds on the water and keeping the boat from sinking, right? Then their focus shifts to the fear that they feel as they see what they believe to be a ghost coming toward them on the water. Once they know it's Jesus, their focus moves to Jesus on the water and Peter getting out of the boat. And once Peter and Jesus are back in the boat, all focus is on Jesus and worshiping him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. Peter's focus throughout this ordeal goes from the boat and keeping it upright to Jesus on the water to the fear he feels when he's distracted by the wind, and then, thankfully, back to Jesus. Friends, we all have shifting focus. There are many things that fight for our attention, daily, by the hour, even by the minute. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. But we have a choice on what to focus on. We choose what gets our attention and what doesn't. Our difficulty comes in that we often aren't disciplined enough to choose our focus, to consciously choose our focus. Of all of the different points of focus that I've just described, the focus between Peter and Jesus is the one that I really want us to hone in on and look at it as it relates to our daily lives. Now, once Peter realizes that it's Jesus on the water, he says, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. Peter's full focus is on Jesus and what his response will be. When Jesus replies, come, Peter's focus on Jesus is absolute. He got down out of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. I imagine Peter's eyes were totally locked on Jesus with each step that he took on the water. And I imagine that Jesus was looking straight back into Peter's eyes. This mental image that I have of Peter and Jesus, you know, on the water, eyes locked, reminds me that God is always focused on us. When we put our full focus back on God, that's when miracles can happen. It's only during this period of intense focus, Jesus on Peter, Peter on Jesus, that Peter is able to walk on the water. And then we have verse 30. But when he saw the wind, when Peter turns his focus away from Jesus to the wind, fear enters this picture and Peter begins to sink. The story is very clear. Jesus didn't take his focus off of Peter. Jesus didn't walk away and be like, uh, <laughs> be back in five minutes. No, Peter took his focus off of Jesus because he was somehow distracted by the wind. The wind wasn't new. It had been there the whole time. Yet for some reason, Peter took his eyes off Jesus and saw the wind. And once he begins to sink, Peter's focus comes right back to Jesus And he cries out, Lord, save me. And so goes the dance that many of us have experienced over and over again. Y'all, I have my hand up again. (laughs) Focus on Jesus. Focus on God's will for your life. And everything seems to be moving along just fine. Get distracted. Lose focus. And then we sink. And then we find ourselves once again crying out, Lord, save me. So friends, how can we remain constantly focused on Jesus? I mean, do we just sit around, completely disregard our responsibilities as, you know, adults and think about Jesus all day, every day, like a lovesick teenager? Well, I mean, that's, that's not very practical in our 
and the lives that we live right now. But we can keep our focus on Jesus by continually inviting him into everything we do, into our daily routine and activities. Be in frequent, dare I say, constant communication. Ask questions. Ask for guidance. Make the Lord your true partner in every area of your life. Have conversations. Seriously. The Holy Spirit is here to help us, to guide us, to be wise counsel for us. Ask questions. Seek that guidance all the time. Instead of going to your best friend for relationship advice or asking your spouse what they think about you leaving your job, go to God first. Ask Him what you should do and wait to hear from Him. He may tell you to go talk to someone else about the matter because he intends to use their response to help guide your decision. But, friend, go to the source first. As I was studying this passage of scripture, I started to wonder about the rest of the disciples. You know, the ones that stayed in the boat. Where was their focus? They probably thought Peter was crazy, you know, just another episode of impulse control. I mean, this is Peter we're talking about. But once Peter left the side of the boat and took a step on the water, I just, I can almost guarantee that all eyes were fixated on the scene unfolding before them. And when Peter and Jesus got back in the boat, All focus came back to Jesus as they worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. I'm honestly still a little amazed that the disciples had any doubts or fears after all that they witnessed Jesus do. But uh, I also find great comfort (laughs) that they were regular people just like you and me who chose to follow his call. They were human, prone to mistakes, prone to have doubts and worries and fears, but they followed Jesus anyway. So ask yourself today, what am I focused on? What has my attention? Where am I spending my time? Is my focus serving the purpose for which God created me? Am I doing my part? Am I inviting Jesus into all areas of my life? Or am I holding back and allowing fear to take over my focus? Ask yourself these questions today, my friend, and answer them honestly. And then ask God, in what ways, in what areas of my life do I need to invite Jesus in? And then, friend, don't forget, wait. For his response. Thank you, friend, for being here with me today. Y'all, it truly is such a blessing to be on this journey with you. And I want to know what's on your heart. And I want to know what's on your mind today. So leave me a comment or send me a message and let me know. I invite you to come back and join me for our next episode, which will be the last piece of our four-part series on water walking. And we will be talking about freedom. Until then. Hey friend, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. It's my pleasure as always to be here with you. If what you listened to today resonated with you, if you enjoyed listening to the show, do me a favor, go ahead and like and subscribe to this podcast and leave a review. Those reviews are so helpful. I can't even tell you how much I appreciate each and every single one of them. And go ahead and share this episode out with a friend. Invite them along for a walk through the word and let's enjoy that daily bread together. See you tomorrow.